Hello, hello, ladies. Um, how up? is your week going? Um, any exciting things um, that happened this week? Oh, exciting things. Oh, man. So it was a pretty Monday. <laughs> <laughs> week. Nothing, nothing is superating. Nothing yeah. well, magical. <laughs> nothing magical. Oh, I did something new. I went to an acting class, which is completely out of what I would do. That's cool. uh, so that was cool. That was a very new experience. I was extremely nervous mm -hmm. and scared and uncomfortable. Um, it, but it was a cool experience to learn something new, to try to get out of your comfort zone. So I don't know. But did it you was, guys it was do the tip of the tongue, the top of the tongue, the tip of the tongue? <laughs> we did do some some tongue twisters that i did not catch any of them i was <laughs> there because first of all that's too difficult my english is not that great so then <laughs> my english is just fine Exactly. Two, then it was like I was so nervous, and in my head I was just like, "What are these people doing?" And I was just like, "This is so interesting." And we had to do some other exercises of like enacting something, and it's like I was like, "Man, I'm way too in my head to be doing it." So I was like so stiff. I looked like a robot. Like, hi, like I didn't know what to do. So I'm um, new to acting, but I am here. Well, right. you know, I don't know if this is. Going this is for me but it's something that um uh, i don't know we're just trying something new so that's something new that happened this week other than just working and working out eating doing living, life living. <laughs> doing life right doing living. like doing true life. story um people from theater they are different human beings um in college <laughs> All my roommates were from the That's theater true. department, and they just operate in a different realm. Yeah, she's it's, weird. They are very whimsical all mm. the time. Um, they will bust out with songs and like <laughs> dancing. I was like, ooh, I thought I was different, but y'all can that. have that title. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> That's so yeah, funny. theater people yeah. are just their own. They walk yeah, sure. to the beat of their own drums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they kind of have to, right? Because the industry that they're in is like, you know, being an, a unique individual is like yeah. what sets you apart from if everybody else is doing the same things, like you become more exactly. uniform. And it's like, you know, in that room, it's like if, if you're trying to go for a position or a job or whatever, or you know a, um, a script or something and you're not you're not like different from another person like you just kind of like in the a needle yeah. in the haystack you know kind of thing yeah so that maybe they have to be like that or maybe they're yeah. like wired that way because that's the way their industry yeah. is yeah that's very true you have to if you're doing like going for audition i mean that's what Disney said it's like 600 people they're auditioning it's mm -hmm. like you're one of the 600 people you have to do something that changes up right that gets your attention because if not you're just like you said you don't hate that it's just like there's nothing that's going to set you apart you're going to give it to book and stuff so that's um, that's true and it's like 600 people they might be playing for the same role so it's, exactly it's, yeah so exactly. you have to be a little quirky but yeah. it was an experience it was an experience there were great roommates um they taught me that God has a very um, interesting sense of humor, humor when he created us. We are all very unique. Nobody can tell me that. Um, like um, this week, we did a lot of goodbyes this week. So a lot of, um, a lot of, some of my coworkers, they, they moved on to other jobs. Um, oh, wow. One of the big topics that we talked about at work is like the big resonation. Like everybody's like, you know, leaving their old jobs, going into new jobs. So it's like this constant wave of movement, job migration. Can you say that? Is that so? Is that a thing? Job I mean, we yeah. can make that a thing. You said it. It's a thing. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Job migration. Well, there is a migration shift that is happening. Yeah, in the states, so it is 
Accurate. Come for me, business bureau. <laughs> so there were a lot of good vibes. So it's just uh -huh. to me, it was interesting because that's what life is about. It's like seasons mm -hmm. and as we were celebrating those past seasons, um, you realize that life is about changes and you have to be adaptable to those changes and you have to mm. be able to go with the flow um, and be okay with changes. So if you're not, life could be very hard um, because there are a lot of highs, but there are a lot of buys in life too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but, <laughs> That's a lot. Transition is so much. It is. Like that's that's a, honestly, if I'm being honest, that's an area that the Lord is still, I'm still allowing the strength of the Lord to be made perfect in that area. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Trans yeah. Transitions are tough. That mm. yeah, for me, they're tough because I'm a creature of habit. Even mm -hmm. though I like doing new things in my life, I don't necessarily like all the time my life, like the foundation mm. of my life to shift or change That's, but yeah. learning to pivot that is a life skill <laughs> that that has to be learned and also just practiced so you know learning to pivot gracefully is another thing <laughs> you know what I mean like learning to pivot without hurting yourself without delaying yourself it's 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 tough business because I think for a lot of people we like our lives to be consistent stay the same in a sense, like we know what, what the rhythm of our life is. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, we don't want our favorite person to die. We don't want, you know, our dog to die. We don't want our, you know, favorite show to come to a close, you know, just different things. You know, like, True. Like, you, know you gotta learn how to pivot. And so that transition stuff, that, that stuff is so real. And I've been in a transition for the last half long and it, it can be tough. It can be yeah. tough. I agree. Really absolutely agree. Absolutely right. It yeah. is, it is, um, it is tough. And I, I, I can relate to a lot of what you just said, because um, I think I have become less, um, I not less, but I have become more fluent now because, mm -hmm. you know, life has taught me that there is so many changes. But in the beginning, when I was experiencing them, it was so difficult. It was just devastating every time. Like it was just like a sense of loss and you go through this grieving, um, yeah. you know, this grieving process. And it That's is so tough. true. So it's, it's um, a reality of the human experience, but just because it's a reality doesn't make it easy. Mm. Um, yeah for sure yeah, but ladies easy. ladies we are just i'm oh i dropped my pen um, <laughs> but i have a backup because i talk with my hands so it, they always fly out <laughs> <Be like. laughs> um <laughs> um well let's introduce today's conversation today conversation is the essence um and we are just so excited um because this is the first conversation of 2022 um so yes we believe that god is going to be taking a painful experience to new communities to new spaces um we're going to enter some new homes and that's exactly what we want to do we want to share stories um share stories about our triumphs share stories about our failures but most importantly share stories about the love in christ our love in christ how christ loves us um so yeah the essence and here we have some new faces um we have our um special guest corey harris hey hey sister hey hey what's <laughs> and we have a new co-host um the new co-host is my sister her name is Nelian Rivera say hey Sissy hey oh, hi Nelian Rivera <laughs> I'm super excited so to be here. um it's interesting because um 
um, Neliang and Corey are best friends. They are very close. Um, and I am a good friend of Corey and Corey is part of the family. So it is very exciting for, exciting for all of us to just be doing this together, you know, as friends. We, we, we know of each other in certain aspects of our life. We, we are familiar with each other. So um, it's good to have these conversations because I think this is one of these conversations, the essence that is kind of like, it puts you in a vulnerable spot of like questioning some stuff and like evaluating some things about who we are as women. Hmm. Yeah. So I am going to um, read the introduction really quickly of this um, conversation because I think it, it kind of like sums what we often think about essence. Um, mm. Essence, the work and flow effortlessly in a romantic ballet. The meaning of the word essence are indispensable quality concentrated to give flavor and sense in a property that without a descriptive group would not exist. Nevertheless, what does it mean in the life of an everyday woman like us? In a world of hyper glam, exaggerated details about outer beauty and the right results, can we indeed be concentrated and sense it with God's design and purpose for us? What does God have to say to the modern woman? the woman with careers, the woman in waiting, the woman raising a child on her own. What about this modern woman? Can we still be unrefined oil poured on Jesus' feet? Can mm. we? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it took us long, it's like, um, can we? <laughs> can we? Is it possible? <laughs> Lord, no, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. How how so? How do you think so? How how can we still with all these other distractions? How can we still be that? Well, I think because at the core of us, that's what essence, you know, essence is the main substance of something. Mm -hmm. It's what it is at its core. So we never change from God's design at our core. And so mm -hmm. I think it's always possible in a world that's changing, what God does is the same. You know what I mean? How he created women, men, image bearers, it's all, it's consistent. And that's something that is a part of God's character is consistency. So I think mm -hmm. that we can rely on, on God in that facet, in that um, respect to um, say that, you know, as things change in the world, we can still be who we were designed to be. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. You know, one thing that I was thinking about is just even, just kind of like the role of the Holy Spirit, you know, like him being with us and being that even in our fallen state as a world, like it is through him, through our sanctification, through the Holy Spirit that we can still come. And like you said, be that unrefined oil that even in imperfections, because like Corey said, God is still consistent and perfect. And his spirit is something that is unrefined. It is, it's untainted. I feel like that's how we're also able to come into Jesus and give him um, our adoration, our love, our perfume, um, you know, on, onto him as well. No, um, I I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Um, but I also have this um questions of like God's design is consistency, and I hundred percent believe in that. But life is inconsistent. Um, and and because life is inconsistent, we change into um what I would say different versions of ourselves, right? We find ourselves in different seasons, mm -hmm. um, doing different things and being different things. So how can those two, how can that biblical truth of God's consistency and God's essence in us 
be congruent with the reality of we change as women. Like I am not the same woman I was mm. last week because Throughout this week, I went through different experiences that made me a little wiser. Maybe um, I did some foolish things that, you know, made me realize certain things. And now I am, you know, a different version of myself. Yeah, I think that with that, it's, I like to separate what I do from who I am. Mm. I don't believe that what I do is who I am. For that again, girl, <laughs> <laughs> the people in the That's back good. didn't hear you. I like to separate what I do from who I am. What I do is not who I am. I don't believe, I don't believe that mm. those are the same things. I think that identity is different than performance. Mm. I do think that you perform out of identity. So I think that what you That's do good. is telling of who you are, of who you are at your core, you know, of what's going on inside of you, what you identify with as, as an identity. Um, so I, I, I think to start that conversation, you have to separate those two and say, um, you know, who am I in my essence? That is my identity. Mm. and how I change the things in my life that change whether I become a different version of myself or whatever you want to say you know how I adapt for the situations I'm in that is what I do Mm. so and I and like I said I think that what you do flows out of who you believe you are and who you associate you know who you associate yourself with being so um for me that never changes. My identity never changes. Mm -hmm. If, and if it changes, it just grows more into the truth. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm on the discovery for the rest of my life to discover the truth about me, to discover, Mm -hmm. discover the truth about God and thereby discover the truth about me. Mm -hmm. And I find that as I, I look at God, I can see A little bit of a delay there. Uh Um, Corey, you will have to repeat that last phrase. There was a bit of a okay. What what did I uh what what was what was the phrase? (laughs) (laughs) Um as as you discover the truth about yourself, um you discover in the truth about God, you also go through this journey and you left off there. Okay. Wait, I discovered the truth about myself. Yes. <laughs> okay. You're saying that the more that you moving on. You're saying basically what you're saying is that the more that you put your focus on God, the more you discover the truth about who I am as a okay. person because we are image barriers. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So that's what I was saying. I was saying that, you know, as image yes. barriers, the more that we focus our attention on learning God, um, and learning, you know, learning the truth about him, we begin to learn the truth about us. Because we're part of, of that. He made us part of his story. You know what I mean? So, and we're image bearers. Like, like you know, Nelly, I repeated that I said. Um, so I think that that's where the conversation has to start mm. in order to have a good mm. foundation on how, how we can preserve this mm. essence. Because I think we have to ask the question, do we preserve this essence? Mm. Girl, did we provide this essence? Yeah. So is it preserved by us or is it preserved by God's spirit? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's so good because I think especially in the time that we're living in, that is the complete opposite, right? If we're talking about so many different things, whether it's our sexuality, whether it's our our what we do, whether it is um in terms of jobs or service, if it's you know, whatever role we play, that is what we adapt as our identity is who we are, right? There's not that differentiation in line, right? It's this is who I am. Rather, this is what I do. This is what I choose to perform. This is what, I, like, there's, there isn't no difference anymore. We've, we've kind of erased that in so many facets. And I think mm. even in the church that it is included, you know? And so it's like, if we're not doing, right? If we're not, like, that's one of the things I remember, like, Corey told me, like, if you're not, if, if everything else was stripped away, 
is, for example, being daughter of God enough, right? As the essence of who I am, being the, the daughter of Christ, being called by him, is that enough for me? You know, and there's a period where I was like, man, that doesn't seem like enough because I am correlating what I can produce from what I am. And, 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 and I can't do that because then that the burden then lies on me mm. to fulfill what God mm. has said or do different things, except of it being reversed and saying, you know, the burden of proof is on you. The burden is on God. I'm simply a vessel. I'm simply here, a part of his story. And so it's like that differentiation where it's hard to, to do that because when we're so taught and, and told whether it's at school, whether it's at job, like you've got to do this, you got to do this, everywhere. you got to do this, you got to everywhere. Results, media, results, social. results. Exactly. Because if you're not that, then you're, who are you? You know, and it's like, and, and I feel like we're, I feel like this generation is in an identity crisis because it's like, we don't know who we are, who is our essence. Mm. Apart from everything else, we as a person, me as a person, who am I? So I think that Oh, that's, that's, you, that's, you just yeah. said so much you guys just cover so much and like I want to go back to like key words that were said like identity the truth adapt image barriers like what does this all mean like okay so we um grew up in the church we were fortunate to have um that faith-based support in our upbringing even though we all have our stories of how we um develop a relationship we got but what about the girl who's washing, the woman who's washing, um, that does not have that. They don't come from a faith-based background. They haven't been taught these <clears throat> principles. So how do you even start with like identity? How will you even like form the meaning of who you are and what is my identity? Yeah, I think that's everybody's question. I think everyone is on the search for who they are in, in one way or another. Um, and so I think that, I'm not saying this is a right answer, but I'm saying this could be a solution. Um, get to know yourself. Mm. I think having honest conversations with yourself is yeah. very important. Like, you know, I know that we love to live in the mystical lane and don't get me wrong, we're going to go there. <laughs> you know, God is, you cannot know yourself outside of God, okay? He created you, there's that. But, but to be, to be um, incredibly tangible and practical with what I'm about to say, not that God is not tangible. Anyway, anyway, we're going to matriculate there, but let's yeah. start here. So starting here, I would say, take inventory of yourself. Mm. what things uh, just in simple ways what things in life bring you joy genuinely not because somebody not because you want the approval of someone not because you want to be accepted not because you want to live at some standard of society what at the core of you brings you joy mm. it could be activities you could even think what is my favorite color you know what I mean why do I like this color I just start to examine yourself I think beginning by examina examination, looking at yourself and seeing what's going on, that's one way to get to know yourself, to, to say, okay, this is how I am identifying with myself, you know, right now, this is what I, who I think I am in these areas, you know what I mean? It's like, what kind of music do I like? Am I sensitive? Am I, um, you know, really resilient? Do I handle stressful situations well? Do I like to be compassionate and be there for people? You know, it's like, ask yourself different questions about who, you know, who you are, what do you, you know, how you show up in the world. And then, um, you know, in a more official capacity, <laughs> in order to know who you are, it's really impossible to know who you are outside of who you, who you were created by. If you bought a remote and you had three different remotes, one by, you know, three different companies, in order to know how each remote works, sure you might know the general purpose like okay remotes turn things on right we know yeah. that just like human beings okay humans do things in the world but for this specific remote there may be different you know different buttons on it and stuff that's gonna 
gonna release a different output than another remote. And you have to go to the manufacturer mm -hmm. in order to know what is going on with this remote. What is this remote designed to do? What is its actual mainframe? You know what I mean? So I think that going to God, you cannot escape that. You can't escape going to God and learning. That's the thing. I think you have to put yourself mm -hmm. in the position of a learner when you come into this and when you're trying to discover who you are learn about God because who you are is so rooted in him it's so rooted in him that is the actual foundation if we are grass God is the soil he's like you know what I mean like you can't get away from <clears throat> your origin so I would say start there start with with getting to know God getting to know his word getting to know what his word says about you Mm. because that's part of your that's your identity he's telling you who you are mm. you know a chosen people okay holy nation period mm. so. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> royal priesthood period I understand <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but for real though like you know you just can't escape that you have to go to the word of god you have to get to know god for mm. yourself and i know that, that can seem to someone who has not been, you know, faith-based, that can seem like, how do I even, how do I even do that? Yeah. And, you know, I would start with Genesis, mm. you know, that, you know, God created male and female in his image. Mm. Okay. So if I, then you have to say, if I am created in the image of God, if God created men and women in his image, what do I need to do to find out about who I am? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm made in someone's image. That means I reflect them. I'm like them. Not I am them, but I'm like them. Mm -hmm. So now I need to learn about who they are. And by learning about who they are, I'm going to learn about who I am because I'm made in his image. And then you start to understand God more. And then you start to understand yourself more in light of him and his light shines on you. And then you can see better who you are mm -hmm. and then you can live better. Then you can perform in life better. Mm -hmm. Then you can live a more fulfilled life and a more stable life because you know who you are and you have a firm foundation of who you are. It's not dependent on mm -hmm. the ebbs and flows of life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. good. <clears throat> That's good. That's um, good. That's really good. That that is. Um, it makes me think about a lot of things. Um, yeah. I really like how you know you didn't say it, but you put God as the center, so He is the essence. So, yeah. um, you know, sure. He is the source of mm -hmm. um of where everything flows out of. Like our personalities are, um, you know, um our identity, the way we adapt, the way we search, you know, is it goes all back to the source. Um, getting to know him, you know. Um, no, that's very well said. Mm. Mm. And how would you, because it's like you did say, like in terms of image or image barriers, how would you define that? What do you mean? Elaborate. Like what what do you mean by image barriers that we are image barriers as Christians of God? What, what does that mean? For a person who may not know, I've never even heard of that word. Okay, like to bear someone's image. So to be like them. So that's what I was saying, like okay. them. So I would, I would to put it in like, like the simplest terms that someone could understand. It's to be like someone, to be made in someone's image. Um, Okay, I give you in like a, a small example. I don't know if this is gonna translate well, but we know that Apple has all these different versions of one product, correct? Yeah. So yeah. there's the original uh, iPod, if anybody remembers that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, but there's the original iPod, but there have been iPods since then, right? Yeah. So if we were saying that all other iPods were made in the image of that iPod, mm -hmm. it, it may be not that iPod specifically, but it's like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I, that's what I would say I would it, to help 
as an illustration or an analogy to understand. That's good. I would use that to say like, that's really good. Like something, like someone. Yeah, like that's you're kind really of in the image of your parents. You're like them. You might look yeah. like them. You might have yeah. some of their mannerisms. There's that connection. Is it brings exactly. you back to the source. There's something exactly. that you carry that connects you back to that source. Um, yes, There's you know we're hitting, the- we're hitting all our sisters, like the t- not the techie sisters. Let me hit that my naturalist <laughs> sisters, you know, like the soil, <laughs> you the grass, you have to be rooted in that grass, like Corey says. So we're hitting all our sisters from all walks of life. Um, but I want to go back to really quickly, you encourage um our sisters um to read the Bible and start um, reading the Bible, start from Genesis. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I picked that verse of the Bible, but the, I think that a lot of times this verse becomes the hub of a lot of controversial um, yeah. train of thoughts about what people perceive Christian women to be like. Um, and I just want to like throw it in the midst of this conversation, because if you start reading the Bible, you are going to read this verse and we don't want you to get discouraged, but, um, we all about being authentic and transparent and, and we believe the Bible as, as it is written. So we want to encourage this you know, this conversation, this Bible verse, and the Bible verse that I'm talking about is First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. I mean, I'm going to read it. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your husband, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornments such as such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self. So the essence, it it doesn't say the essence, but inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are daughters. Um, you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. So it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of words. Um, but it could be a little bit of discouragement to, you know, a lady, a, a, a young girl, they starting to read the Bible because it says like, submit yourselves to your husband. It talks about being quiet. It talks about not having so much like elaborate um, jewelry. You talk about me. <laughs> Right, right, because you violated all of it. I violated all of it. I violated all of it. <laughs> Look, I wear all of it and some extra. So, like, this is this is a real verse. This is a verse that is often you often hear in feminist platforms, um, in 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 summons of empowering women like. Christianity is this like backwards religion of like women get oppressed, women have to be quiet and submissive, um, or they don't have a part. So the essence, right? We are God's identity. It is clear that God speaks highly of the woman throughout the Bible. So why these verses and how can we like understand them and move on? Hmm. Okay, so I'd say that to understand, so as we are learners, right? We talked about being Mm -hmm. learners. So as we begin to learn the Bible, um, if someone says something, you have to investigate it. Mm. So I will say, when you read the Bible, investigate. Don't just be like, oh, no, we got to be quiet. 
because said, <laughs> wives, be quiet. It does, that's, is that the meaning of what's going on here? I think you have to understand the historical context. Why was this being said? Mm -hmm. Ask the Bible questions. Why is this being said? What was happening that gave this response? Why was Peter, and we have to remember, these are not just, words thrown together to us mm -hmm. these are words and and messages to people that we that are that are relevant to us today right because the bible is relevant to life okay period but um <laughs> but you have to you have to look at the scripture for what it is mm -hmm. was peter responding to something this is a letter this is actually a letter Mm -hmm. from Peter to these people so it's like you know what was he responding to and I think in order to understand the context and have a good a good understanding of what the word is saying especially if you think it's saying something about you you have to understand the context so is Peter saying for all women not to wear gold jewelry and da da da, da and you know to obey your husbands and that I mean, yes, we're supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to be on the same page. With <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but if you have a husband, but what if you don't have a husband? Mm -hmm. It doesn't apply to you then, huh? Does it apply or does it not apply? So that's why it's important to understand the context and why this message is being conveyed and mm -hmm. what the message is. That's going to help you to understand what this is even saying, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how you should be applying it to yourself because this is in response to something. This is a letter to these people in response to something, something that something was going on in their culture mm -hmm. that he was responding to and correcting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. Wives being subject, a lot of times we take people take this verse and be like, you know, women should be subject to men. Mm -hmm. It says wives, husbands, these are specific roles mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. And um I'm a single woman. I don't have a husband. I'm not a wife yet. Um, so <laughs> well, we're ready. <laughs> right, okay. Hand is vacant. Just saying. <laughs> but but you know, so I think that you know, we have to take it in the context of what it's talking about. Okay, yes, sure. Submit to your husband. To your husband. You don't have to submit to every man in life. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's now that's not I'm not saying be out here, you know, being disrespectful to people. <laughs> no. But what I'm saying is in this scripture, they're talking about husbands and wives. They're talking mm -hmm. about these wives having unbelieving husbands. Mm -hmm. These this is in response to these wives, you know, in, in verse one, it says, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband. Um, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be one without a word by the conduct of their wives. These wives obviously were having some some issues with their husbands and maybe they wanted to leave them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you if they've started to believe and then the husband don't believe and it's, you, you know, that it's you have to look at it in context is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Or disrespect so, I them. Think... Maybe they were like, oh, they're not believers. So why should I listen to yeah. you? Well, there is yeah. an order and a structure in marriage. Yeah. Um, yes. I absolutely. think that too, that what Peter was drawing to was focusing on is the character of the woman in terms of the character of how are they reflecting inside? You know, like, Yes, he was, he was talking about it. Like I said, it goes back to where you said the context. You know, you could be, a lot of times we get thrown off guard by words and stuff like that, where it's like, we may find offensive, like, your beauty should not come for outward adornment. This and that's like, hey, excuse you. I'm trying to look nice and snatched out hey. to me. But it's like, we forget that when we trip over it, like you said, when we put ourselves in the context of the Bible, which that's a whole nother conversation, but we kind of miss the point of what he's saying. And he's talking about the inward beauty of the exactly. person. What is going on in your heart? Exactly. That's what he's talking about. You know, like, how is it that your character within, within yourself, what is going on in there? You know, because you can, we can beautify ourselves to the right. teeth. To the teeth. Our character, 
our essence, our, our, our thoughts, our perceptions, our words, our attitude, our conduct could be trash, Absolutely. you know? And even the same thing that we said about like, even people when look at pastors or always this or that, like you can say, you can know the word, you can describe it, all this, you can be blinged out, looking posh and everything. Yet you could be so far removed from God. It makes mm. no sense, mm. you know? And so, so far removed that, from the essence, the source. Exactly, exactly. And so I think that here, what Peter's speaking about is the inward appearance of how is, it's kind of like a, a, a moment of pause, right? A silent moment of like, what is your inner self like? You know, like you said, like, what is the essence of your being? What are you like? How is that? You know, if you take all this out, right? If we take all this, we take the earrings, I take my hat off, I take my everything off that makes Neliano in me, in the heart of hearts, who am I? And what is that being shown? Is that greater than the reflection that is shown in the outside or is it vice versa? You know, and so I think that um, that's kind of what he's, 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 he really is the essence of what he's talking about is, is what Peter's talking about in, this, in these verses. Yeah, I think you hit it like the the nail on the head because in verse, um, I'm looking at it, so I'm looking to the side, but in yeah. verse um, four, but let your adorning, adorning what you put on, let what you put on be the hidden person of the heart with imperishable being. Mm. So it's like this juxtaposition of mm. what is perishable and what is imperishable. Ooh, Peter that's thinks good. that what is perishable are these kind of outward things, you know what I mean? But the, what's imperishable is that inward, that inward beauty that that Nellyon's talking about, that is precious in God's sight. Mm -hmm. And it, he says here, God's this is 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 precious in God's sight. This quiet spirit, this this sweetness, mm -hmm. you know. And I and I I'm of the mind that um, God is not telling women to just be sweet, <laughs> you know, to be mm -hmm. kind, to, mm -hmm. to put on gentleness. Gentleness is a fruit of the spirit that mm -hmm. all believers, all yep. believers yep. are called to bear this mm -hmm. type of fruit. The, the mm -hmm. spirit of God produces gentleness in mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. every believer. It's not specific mm -hmm. to women. I know that mm -hmm. sometimes we like to take certain things within culture, you know, traditions of faith, um, and say that this is for women, it for believers. Mm. And so even submission is for believers. So, you know, that's why I say when you come to the word, be a learner. Mm. Don't assume. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, because I have read some things, I'd be like, God, how dare you? <laughs> you know? Like, are you serious? You know, the like, old testament. Right. <laughs> I'll get you every time. There's a lot of things I'd be like, Lord. <laughs> I can see why people are questioning your character now. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's like, you know, that's it that in itself is funny because we assume that we are better than God. We're more good than him. Mm -hmm. and that's another conversation. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, don't assume when you come to the word like, oh, this is what this means. Learn. Learn what it means. Mm -hmm. Learn why it's being said. What's the purpose? And how you can, you and how you should respond to the word. You know what I mean? It's the response that you would give to the word. So you learn how you respond to it um, through understanding it in its context. And what God is trying to say here, which is, I think, exactly what Nellyon said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's it. That That is the point. Um, and I love how um, we have continuously been saying, like, be a learner, um, ask why. You know, like, as you get to know Christ, God was a teacher that mm -hmm. he was like rabbi, you know, like he was a teacher, yeah. you know, so... In a lot of stories, God almost pushed the characters of the story to ask the question. Like when Job mm. was in his situation, he made it so tight where Job, um, Job, I always mess it up. Job. 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 Um, um, he was put into a position where he was asking God, like, 
in his request, in his searching, um, he was asking God questions. Like in the New um, Testament, God um, asked his disciple, who do you say I am? Who do, who, who, you know, who do people think that I am? Like he will open these dialogues of like, ask me the questions, ask me what mm. you're wondering about, ask me why should we follow you? Like he wants to have these dialogues with us. And that is searching. Like as humans, we are naturally searchers. Um, and like one of the bis biggest misconceptions about Christianity is that you just have to follow. Um, yes, you have to obey. Yes, you are called to um, submit. But God is not a dictator. He is um, an inviter. He invites you to dialogue with him. Like mm -hmm. ask him yeah. why. Why, God? Um, and you might get the answer right away. You might not get the answer at all. And um, that's when faith comes in. But that's another conversation. But he does want to have these dialogues. Um, and if we like, like um, Corey says, if we approach the Bible in this way, as learners, as, um, you know, um, I would say like, challenge God, like be like, you know, God, why? Why, why should I follow this way? And like the Holy Spirit is so powerful and so real in your life. He will guide you to the truth. There are things that are not going to be revealed to us in this lifetime, but God will guide you to the path of self-discovery and understanding his identity, going back to the source. He is the know-it-all. So ask him mm. questions. Don't be afraid to investigate. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's so, I think many times um, we're taught that, yes, there is a fear of the Lord and reverence for the Lord, but sometimes we're put in a place, you know, where we can't ask questions. Like, you know, and I think that sometimes is a taught thing by people, by parents, by other all adults were like, don't question me. Like, I'm telling you what it is. And a lot of times our experiences with our yeah. parental roles is attached to the identity of God. And so we're like, man, um, yeah, my parents say I can never question anybody. I mean, how, how, if I'm supposed to question the Lord, like, <laughs> like how am I going to do that? Like, he says something's like, well, let me shut up and listen. You know, it's like that experience that we have is the same thing that we have to approach God and it's not, it's different. And it's sometimes it's hard to undo that, right? Um, because it's, it is the thing, I don't know for a long time, it's like, I can't question God, like he's God, who the heck am I to question him? Mm -hmm. and, and it's not necessarily question him in a way of like authority, but in a sense of asking questions, like you said, of like, this doesn't make no sense to me. How can you do this? and say like this doesn't make sense you got to explain this to me um but sometimes we're, we're taught right that it's like that's a no-no and i think that we need to do a better job as well within the church within the christians in the communities of families of faith to allow and engage conversations even as parents like sometimes like when you're with your kid obviously you're the authority some things is like it goes it goes but have a dialogue with your child let him understand that he can come to you asking questions like why did i do why did you do this it's like well because X, Y, and Z, you know, and every situation is different, but I think that's another reason why sometimes we're scared to go to God. It's like, he's this, he's this, he's God, you know, I'm just, yeah, <laughs> you know, but it's like you said, it's like, it's very true all throughout the world. There is an engaging thing of like, this is a dialogue between he do with his disciples. He didn't give them the answer straight away. He made them think. It's like, ponder what I'm saying. He was speaking parables. He was speaking, sometimes when it sounds like to me it's like can we can you speak straight but then he was like i want you to engage with my word and what i'm saying you know and, and so that's that's a really important point when it comes to the word of god and, and just the faith as well yeah i think if we go back to the essence oh go ahead oh no i was just saying critical thinking god god mm -hmm. likes critical thinking mm -hmm. yeah i i was gonna say if we're going back to essence right 
our essence as image bearers, because that is our essence. Yeah. Um, who is God? God is intelligent. Mm. He is highly intelligent, the most intelligent being that has ever existed. Mm. You know what I mean? And he created us in his image. We are also intelligent beings. Mm. He created us with that capacity. If God created us with that capacity, why then would he want us to cut off our intelligence to understand him? Mm. Dismiss the thoughts of our mind. Um, dismiss our understanding. We can't mm. understand without our mind, <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? Without intelligence. So um, I, I think asking God will totally meet you there in your thoughts, in your questions, in your curiosity. I would encourage curiosity about God, curiosity about the word of God, discover, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when we're talking about learning the word, like it's discovering. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be right. Mm -hmm. You That's know what I good. mean? Allow the Holy Spirit to help you understand and meet you in your intelligence or lack thereof. <laughs> but, <laughs> You know? We are Jewish, <laughs> but, but you know wherever you're at, wherever. You know, okay, the Holy Spirit will meet you for real if you ask Him to to help you to understand the Word. That's the only way you really gonna understand anyway, because the scriptures are revealed by the Spirit. Mm. Okay, you can go to the Word and get knowledge, but not understanding without mm. the Spirit. You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. So, Make so them remember. Good. So getting mm -hmm. understanding of things and, and discovering and, mm -hmm. and allowing God to, to meet you right there in your questions, mm -hmm. in your doubts. God is not intimidated. He has existed before time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is not intimidated because you got a question about him. Right. You don't, under That's so you don't true. understand something. Mm -hmm. Go to God with your question and with your lack of understanding and he will mm -hmm. give you understanding. Mm -hmm. And it may not happen instantaneously. It mm -hmm. may be a progressive thing because sometimes we're resistant, resistive mm -hmm. to the truth. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Sometimes God is trying to communicate that understanding to us and we're resisting. Mm. you know what I mean we're not accepting it so we don't understand it and sometimes it takes a process for us to understand God's truth because it's so different than us it's mm. different than human nature although we are image bearers we are not the same as God we are like mm. him we are not the same yeah. as him so yeah. you know that that bridge that gap of understanding right. you know we have to allow allow God to to bridge that gap and I think you know practically as as you just keep at it keep at it and community like learn about god in community yeah learn about god with that. other people yeah. this I, we here for you okay the scriptures are meant to be discussed they are not mm -hmm. just for you in your house to be reading and writing in your journal like that's cute that's nice a dialogue exactly. sometimes a debate people yeah. okay. people don't want to say that like yeah. mm -hmm. sometimes it's a debate yeah that's why it's part of the investigative process, right. dialogue, debate, yeah. investigating. God is yeah. not afraid of none of it. Exactly. Yeah, and understand that the Bible is a collection. It's, it's a book for a group of people. It is exactly. not a book for a person. And we make a mistake of thinking that we input ourselves and this is about me. No, it is about a group of people. He came uh -huh. to save a group of people. He came to free a group of people. He said, come on, a group preach. of people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if, for example, when God gave uh, Moses the Ten Commandments, it wasn't for him and his household. It was for who? The people of Israel to follow the God that, that, that he's being revealed to him, not Moses, sorry, Abraham. Um, but, um, you know, but anyways, but yeah, so I, I think that it's important to understand that, that, that the Bible is for a group of people, even if we think about submission, right, which is a word that's very, um, it's a scary word. God knows, I feel, I used to be, be like, oh, what's the to who, Lord? Not me. What's the to who? <laughs> like, uh, a man better submit to me too, like, I still do. <laughs> like, you know, but understanding, like, if we're understanding the concept, again, of submission, everybody submits to something in this world. Mm -hmm. Every single person, you can submit yourself to, to, you have to submit yourself to a leader, to a person of authority in your job and at school, um, to your parents, 
you can submit yourself to even things as such as uh, such as social media, right? If you give your time, if you put in your effort, if you are submitting, like it, it, there's so many different facets of submission. Mm. And, and, and even here in this context, um, thinking about like submission, it's like we are submitting ourselves onto, like just like the church has submitted themselves, just like um, a man has to submit to God. Like there is a role, like submission is not this thing where you are enslaved and you're chained up and you just gotta do it, you just gotta be, yes, master, no, master. This is like, you know, it's not like that. That's not what submission is about. And, and I think that if you understand the context and the role that it plays, again, in the larger sense that then it's not so intimidating because it's like like it's it's something of service you know i see submission as something mm. that there's still conversation <laughs> right you know like even in your let's take a job for example i have to submit to my 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 director right but there's still conversation where it's like okay you gave me this assignment i have to submit it to you i have to submit my what i'm doing what i task but yet there's still conversation of where okay how can we do this i think this is best done this way you know it's not a if it's done right it's not always the case but if it's done right it's a two-way uh, end of conversation right and so that's I, how i like to think about it it's good to say because there is um submissions but you don't have that will but yeah. we are going to say god-given submission is designed yeah. to have is a service in a conversation um yeah. because in this world there are submissions that are um, deadly you are enslaved you are um you are saying yes master i will do this and that but in no, a, no, no. Yeah, no in, no that's exactly right let them know <laughs> we are free <laughs> but in a god-given submission and that's the key word god-given submission is a service and a conversation with who you are submitting to and I believe that that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Quite honest, that is the difference. Um, so it goes back to like not taking a word and like spiring with it, like, oh, submission. No, submission in God's essence and in God's um, identity and relationship is not the same as the submission we know as human beings. Um, yeah. I, um, about submission, because submission in the past has been a struggle, uh, topic. Yeah, join the club. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I, I didn't have a proper understanding. That's really why, yeah. um, I thought the submission was something that was not, I was going by what I assumed about submission and what people traditionally have treated it as and not what it actually is. Submission is a function. Mm. It is not a role. It is not mm -hmm. a identity. It's like, oh, you're you're like you are submission. No, it's like submission is a function of a relationship between two entities that extends the entire functionality of that relationship, extends the success of that that relationship. In an example of 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 husband and wife, a wife submitting to her husband does not mean that 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 function is without advocacy mm. that it's without you being able to speak yep it is you submitting in the, in these ways helps the household to overall the overall success of the, the household that does not mean whatever this person That's says so you do so submission sad. is a function it's like okay we're i'm gonna it's like a i like to look at it as a um what's the best way to say i like to look at it as a way to join forces cooperatively mm. we may have different ideas about this different ideas about that but we join forces cooperatively i'm not going to hold us up because i have a different idea i'm going to speak my idea i'm going to advocate for my idea but if you say hey i think that this might be the better thing or I think that we should go this way after considering what I've had to say then it's like okay even if I think it's wrong I'm going to submit and this is something a function that God called us to do as believers yep so men and women are supposed to submit it's just that this is being highlighted here as women submitting to their wives excuse me submitting to their husbands 
in, in terms of their households, but we are first and foremost brothers and sisters in Christ and should be submitting to one another. And furthermore, this submission can function when the man can function properly and be more easy anyway, let me say that, when the man is actually living in the role that he's supposed to be as a husband. Yeah, yeah. Because Mm. if you have a husband, the way that the Bible describes loving you like Christ loved the church, think about how Christ loved the church. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, he's right now, churches are doing crazy, stupid stuff, mm-hmm. and God and, and and Jesus loves them. Mm-hmm. Like he he laid his life down for them. Even then, people were doing crazy stuff, mm-hmm. and Jesus laid his life down. He loved. He gave his life for the church. Mm-hmm. So I think you know we have to think about it like that. And it's like they have a more sacrificial role. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? If they're called to be like Jesus towards me. I don't know yes. about y'all, but sometimes, you know, I'd be. I, I, you I, be covered, man. You <laughs> be covered. Okay, sometimes be like, I'm like, oh, Jesus, I'm too much for me. But mm, right. you, you're allowing, some. you know, Jesus, he allows us to do things. Sometimes it's hurtful towards ourselves mm. um, because of our free will, you know. But it's like, you know, when you when you realize how a man is called, to, a husband is called to love his wife, it's sacrificial love. It's yeah, dying okay. to self-love. It mm-hmm. is putting them before yourself kind of love. Mm-hmm. And if a man, ladies, is doing that for you, is loving you that well, I promise you, you will not feel bad about submitting to some decision. I'd be like, yes, sir. You want a glass of water? I got not you, yet, baby. <laughs> Because yeah. that kind of man does not make you feel inferior. Mm-hmm. Yes. That kind of man does not make you feel devalued mm-hmm. in your submission to him. It's, you mm-hmm. are always valued. Mm-hmm. If Jesus' love does not make you feel devalued, it makes you feel valued. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's good. a lot of freedom in his love as it well. It place you love. in a position. Um, yeah. And I always like to say, like, throughout the Bible, not um, not just me wanting to say, but uh, as you read the Bible, God always describes the woman as an administrator. So there is, like, um, in the sense of, like, she she puts things in order. Like, the, the husband um, is the head of the household. He makes the decision but the woman helps in putting things in order, in administering things, um, because we are naturally have a keen sense of details of like, you know, of seeing the, the things that maybe their analytical minds can catch. So we do have a role and being an administrator of a household it's a big responsibility. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a powerful role. It's not less than, it's complementary to his That's role. Um, so ladies, we just need to be choosing God-given men. Like, oh. no, we just think it's, yeah, that, that yep. was the correct That's thing, right? Yes. That's it. So because... Yeah. That is the point. That is the point. Yeah. A, a man of God would not make you feel less because you submit. Yeah. Like Corey yeah. said it. Exactly. She said it. You know, it, yeah. there's exactly. no need to repeat. It has been said. If you need to hear it again, rewind, girl. Run it back. Don't pick no food. You decide to pick no food. You pick a food, you pick no food. And I think that you need to have a level. I think that you also have to have a level of trust in the person. Like, if you are going to submit to something, you need to trust his character, trust his decision making. Look at his history. Like, what is he like? Even in small things of finances, for example, right? Like, is he trustworthy? If you give him, for example, a hundred dollars and you say you're going to do X, Y, and Z, is he trustworthy enough to do that? Like, that's a small example, but like having those instances of trusting his character, his decision making, uh, trusting in, in his ability of his reason 
how does he reason? Does he reason out of emotion? Like when he gets angry, does it make a decision where it's like, oh, heck no, we, we, we about to go all out. Oh, you see that? Oh, baby, baby, come here. Uh-uh, we about to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he, is he prone to that? Or does he take the time to stop and think, you know? And, you know, this is applicable for, for even women who, let's say, who are not Christians or don't believe or anything like that. But think about those things when you're submitting or being with a guy, you know, like, you know, is, how is his reasoning? How is, how does he make decisions? How is his character? How does he treat his family? Those others uh, who surround him, like all those things, like if you are observant and watch, like that's how, that's how you can make the best decision of like, okay, this is someone that I can submit to in terms of, this is someone I can make a life with. This one I, I can entrust that when things are hard and when he needs to make a decision, like I don't have to worry. I'm not flustered like, oh Lord Jesus, I know that he is not about to make this good decision. Oh, I know, oh my God, he is a, oh no, 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 no. You know, there's not that. And mind you, there's gonna be times where you may disagree, may have different perspectives. That's very natural, but at least you can still trust him that he's still gonna have the best, um, the best in mind for him and his family and his household and stuff. So think about those things as well. Yeah, that's good. Sure. That's good. Um, and I want to <clears throat> wrap it up with this final question. Um, and it's a heavy one, so <laughs> let's okay. do it in five minutes. <laughs> um, is the feminist movement ideology or the portrayal of a woman in the 21st century aligned with the word of God? Mm. Go for the jugular. Okay. <laughs> okay, ask it one more time. Do it one more All time. All right. Let's see. Um, oh, did I lose it? Is the it's... feminist movement ideology or the portrayal of a woman in the 21st century align with aligns with the word of God? Mm. Okay, so I have a theory. Ooh, what's your theory? I just have a little theory about it. I believe that this feminist movement is sort of a trauma response. Mm. Um, Speak it. And I say this because when a group of people or people in general are oh, feel oppressed, you know, feel oppressed and devalued in extreme ways, um, and then they rise. Is almost like this exaggerated response because of all the suppression and oppression. You then you know exert yourself in incredible ways. So I don't think that um, the feminist movement is completely wrong at all um i'm for women okay period like you know i'm for the fair treatment of women equal pay everything all the things mm -hmm. um i'm not for hyper fem, fem, uh, feminism um no. where someone now has to become lesser for you to be feminine for you to have That's to be good. a feminist you know I, not in that way i'm not a feminist in that way mm -hmm. i believe in women i believe in supporting women i believe not only just in supporting women but empowering women mm -hmm. um and i believe in the strength of a woman because i believe that we are equals to men in our you know just how god created us i don't believe that god made us lesser than mm. so i think that this modern response though is in response to being feeling oppressed and devalued and to feeling like we're not worthy like we're not this like being told and by society by our paychecks by you know the lack of whatever support um among women it 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 has told us you know these things over years but i think that our response the the christian woman's response to this has to be rooted in that essence of who we are Mm -hmm. as an image bearer that we are valuable that we are made in the image of god and so therefore we cannot be lesser because then that would be saying that god is lesser is he is he mm -hmm. no of course not and there are things that are attributed to women that um that we in in humanity define as femininity that are in the image of god 
if we think about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit role we have to not confuse remember roles with who we are but the holy spirit's role in our life is that of a helper who else is a helper mm-hmm. the bible mm-hmm. describes as a helper mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. you know it wasn't good for that man to be alone and the lord made him a helper suitable for him yeah okay in the same way the holy spirit is a helper to us and so you know like when we are I think when, when we're talking about feminism, we have to remember our essence. We have to remember who we are at the core of us. And if it, I would say, if anything about any movement, any other identity in life does not align with you as an image bearer, it's not for you. Mm. Yeah. It's trying to add on to, to who you are, but who God says you are is enough. And it's not less than, I think that, you know, the more we, that's why I say, I think the more we understand who God has designed us to be, who, who we are at our core, at our essence, then we will be able to walk into the world and, and not be changed and phased by um, the world's definition of what we should be, how we should act, what we should do. Um, so, you know, is it aligned to the Bible? There may be certain things that are. I believe the valuing women is aligned with the word of God. I believe that supporting women is aligned with the word of God. Um, I believe that advocating for women is aligned with the word of God. Um, so there's some, there's some aspects that are aligned and there's some that are not. But ultimately we have to take our, our cues of feminism, if we want to call it that. I don't really like to classify it as that, but our, our, our cues of who we are from our essence from our mm. image bearing selves good. you know we are image bearers of god so that's my answer that's good that's good that's that's mm. a great answer um so one thing um a tradition that we are building in our conversation is um we will give the special guests um a time to address a message to the girls and women behind us. Like what is the one declaration um, that you want to leave behind for other women and girls about the essence? So this is mm-hmm. your cue, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing I'd say, trust in God's design. And I say that because life is hard. And life will try to tell you, situations in life will try to tell you who you are. And allow God's truth to be revealed to you. Don't be too hasty to rush into an identity. Let God reveal who you are and love yourself along the way. You you may change, your ideas may change, your thoughts may change, your desires may change. and if you entrust your life to God, love him, love yourself um, as he has you on the journey of discovery. Um, you don't have to say this is, you know, this is always who I'm going to be. This is, you know, as you're learning the truth about God and about you, allow yourself grace and love for where you are right now. And that's only going to continue when you, when you behave that way towards yourself. It's only going to progress the love you have for God and for others and for yourself. So that's why I would say, trust in God's design that he's got you, that he can sustain and grow you to where you need to be. Um, a mm-hmm. submitted heart is a safe heart. Mm-hmm. So, Love it. Yeah. It's a great way to wrap up. It is, it's a beautiful way. Thank you ladies for watching. Um, remember to like our conversation, share our conversations, and join our conversations. We are here for you, sister. Welcome to the community. Hashtag sisterhood, welcome home. Welcome. Yes.